So this looks like a pretty easy problem, but many of you are going to get this wrong and you'll probably be a little bit shocked, but don't panic. I'm going to fully explain why you probably are going to get this wrong and how to avoid this particular mistake. Now, a lot of you are going to get this right as well. Let me go ahead and uh, tell you the problem. We have 10 divided by 10 cubed. What is the answer? And we don't want to use our calculators. Put that away. Uh, you know, you could definitely use the calculator in between your ears. That's supercomputer. That's definitely not AI. Not, you know, everyone's talking about artificial intelligence. That's actual intelligence. That's much, much better than AI. But uh, I'm pretty confident that a lot of you will get this correct. Okay. But uh, some of you are going to make this particular error. It's a very common misunderstanding when it comes to uh, basic mathematics. Anyways, I'm going to explain this in just one second, and then I'll fully walk through this problem so you do not ever, ever make this uh, mistake again. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. It really is my uh, true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you're having a tough time with mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. And by the way, I'll leave a link to my uh, math help program in the description. So really the key to doing this problem is we need to figure out what we have to do first. Do we take 10 and divide it by 10, get that answer, and then cube it? Uh, now, if you did it that way, you did it the incorrect way. But why? Well, I'll explain this in just one second. So that's one way you could have done the problem. Or you could have said, all right, let me see here. Before I do the division, I'll take 10 and then cube it, get that answer, and then take 10 and divide it by the uh, result of this. So that's the correct approach, but why? Well, it's because this lovely saying right here, PEMDAS, all right? So if you never heard this before, this is probably one of the most widely uh, uh, known phrases in basic mathematics. And there's a cute little phrase that goes along with it. It's a little a mnemonic memory aid. It says, or, or goes like this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I don't know what uh, Aunt Sally did, but, you know, she's been very helpful to all of us uh, studying mathematics for many, many years. Again, this phrase has been around for decades, right? Probably your great-grandparents were uh, saying it back in the 1950s. Let's quickly review it real fast. This is um, uh, not the most challenging problem when it comes to uh, this phrase, but the topic here is the order of operations, okay? So uh, in mathematics, you know, when we have two numbers, if I give you a number like 2 and, oh, I'm sorry, 10 and 2, like uh, what can we do with numbers? Well, you can add them, you can subtract them, multiply them, divide them, you can take powers, etc. So these are mathematical operations, okay? And the correct order to do these particular mathematical operations is this little phrase right here, PEMDAS, right? So if we just follow this little checklist, we'll uh, get this right every single time. So the P stands for parentheses. So if you see any parentheses, or technically it's what we call a grouping symbol, so like brackets like this or squiggly brackets, we're going to go to that first, okay? Now there's more on this, and I'll leave that for other uh, math videos on my channel or my math courses, but you really want to practice much more challenging order of operation prompts. So you're going to look for any parentheses. In this particular problem, we have no parentheses, so we can kind of move on, all right? So we're working this checklist from left to right. So the E stands for exponents. So if you have something like 2 to the fourth power, this little number up here is called the exponent, but really the E stands for power. So if you see anything like 2 to the fourth or 10 to cubed, we're going to do that next, okay? So that probably explains, you know, how we're going to uh, do this problem correctly. The next is multiplication division. So you're going to do multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So this is a very, uh, another very uh, common place where students misunderstand. So you're going to do multiplication or division, if you see it from left to right in this order, or division and then multiplication because we see division first from left to right. And then A and S stands for addition and subtraction, and it works the same way as this. Okay, so that's just a quick review of the order of operations. So let's go ahead and uh, think about PEMDAS as we go through this problem. All right, so the first thing is, do we have any parentheses? No. Do we have any powers? Yes. So that's what we're going to be doing 
we have to figure out what 10 cubed uh, is equal to. All right, so that is uh, the, uh, the first step. So let's just make sure you understand what 10 cubed is. We'll start off with something like 2 squared. 2 squared means what? Take uh, 2 and multiply it by itself two times, right? 2 cubed uh, means take 2 and multiply it by itself three times. 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 cubed. 2 squared, so 10 cubed uh, means take 10 and multiply it by itself three times. Okay, so that's what that is. Now, you could figure this out. 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000. So you can kind of do this in kind of different steps. You know, uh, there's, there's basically some freedom to be a little bit creative when you're doing a math problem. As long as you're showing your steps, you know, you're telling a story where your teacher understands, you know, oh, okay, I understand exactly what you're doing, so you get to the right solution. That's what you want to do. But there's another way we can think about this problem at this point, and I'll show you that in just one second. But uh, let's just go ahead and uh, reiterate what 10 cubed stands for, right? That's 10 times 10 times 10. Now, sometimes when you know you have to do this multiplication, you don't necessarily want to just, you know, get the number. Like, you don't want to just stop and be like, all right, 10 times 10 times 10, and you just figure this whole thing out. Of course, this is 1,000 because 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000. But sometimes you want to hold off. And there's another way we could think about this entire problem in a different uh, way, okay? So let me show you that right now. So we could think about this problem this way. 10 divided by 10 cubed is uh, equal to this version of the problem. 10 divided by, this is a fraction bar, 10 cubed, all right? And this really makes it kind of clear uh, to what we um, need to do first, right? We're not going to make this mistake and take 10 divided by 10 and then cube the answer because here we're seeing it as a fraction. So we're going to have to figure out what the denominator is and then we'll uh, simplify it. We'll kind of put it together with the numerator. So uh, my suggestion is when you see division problems, something like this, you always kind of think in terms of, uh, of a fraction. So 10 over 10 cubed, you know, that's I think the best approach to do this problem. Before we continue on, it would really mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button. Now, the reason I want more subscribers is basically I look at everybody that subscribes to my channel as a new student and as a math teacher, that makes me very happy. So uh, the best way to support this channel and what I do is to simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, remember, uh, irrespective of whether you're a math student or not, if you want to relearn math, for example, and you've been out of school for many, many years, I have two great courses, my Math Foundation and my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You can find links to all of this in the description of this video. But if you happen to be a student, make sure to check out my full uh, course library. Again, you can find the links to all of this in the description below. All right, so here uh, we have 10 over 10 cubed. And um, now we know that 10 cubed is equal to 10 times 10 times 10. Now, again, you can write that as 1,000, but don't be so hasty. We just kind of want to leave this fraction like this, 10 over 10 times 10 times 10. Now, uh, there's a good reason for that. Now, why do you think that is? Well, because we have a fraction, and anytime you have a fraction, you're going to be thinking with your final answer, I need to simplify it. So if I have 100 over 200, you're not going to turn that in. Uh, you know, in math, we don't like to have our answers, our final answers, not simplified. So you would want to reduce this answer down to one half. OK, so you're thinking, you know, you're like, OK, all right, this YouTube math guy, he's telling me, you know, I should you need to reduce or simplify all fractions. Yes, indeed. It's not optional. OK, if you give this to most math teachers, they're going to take points off. So you have to simplify. And before you do all this multiplication, you need to be thinking about, all right, the next step. I can simplify by cross canceling like factors. All right. Now. Uh, I'll show you, you know, how we get to the final answer right here, and then I'll give you a couple basic answers, uh, basic, a uh, uh, few more examples, excuse me, so you understand my point. Okay, so here I have a factor, all right? So if I have 10, 2 times 5, 2 and 5 are factors of 10, all right? So let's just make sure we understand the, the terms I'm saying. 2 and 5 are factors of 10. So in mathematics, if you have a factor, if you have a number, and if you have like factors between the numerator and denominator, you could cross cancel one for one. 
So I could, this 10 can take away this 10. I can cross cancel these, and I'm left with 10 times 10, which of course is 100. Now, some of you might be saying, well, hey, there's nothing up here. There's no number, you know, like, you know, uh, isn't this a zero? There, well, no, there's always one. Okay, one is always a factor no matter what. So we can think of uh, this as 10 times 1 over 10 times 10 times 10, right? That's 10 cubed. So I can cross cancel this 10 to this 10, and now I have 1 in the numerator, and 10 times 10 is 100, all right? So that's how you want to be thinking about You're kind of like, you know, uh, uh, being strategic about simplifying your fractions. You don't want to do all the multiplication. It wouldn't be so bad. You would have ended up with um, uh, 10 over 1,000, and then you, you you know need to reduce again. So let's just take a look at one other quick example. Uh, so if you have, let's say, uh, 40 over 50, real basic example here, right? So uh, most people are like, oh, we just can't cross cancel the zeros. Yes, indeed, but really what's going on is 40 is what? 4 times 10 and 50 is 5 times 10. Now, these are factors. Uh, 4 and 10 are factors of 40. 5 and 10 are factors of 50. So we're looking for uh, like factors to uh, cross-cancel, and whatever is left is the simplified fraction. Okay, so don't despair if you made this little mistake. It's no big deal. It's perfectly fine to make mistakes in mathematics. Okay, Do not ever feel bad about making an error. you got to be... Um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? You know, easygoing about studying anything, uh, in, to include math. The key is to build up your skills one step at a time. Now, this is where a lot of students get frustrated, okay, because, you know, they're trying to, uh, you know, complete a journey. Let me kind of just show you my little metaphor. You know, it's like steps. Like, you know, if you're trying to climb a bunch of steps way up here, you're trying to get to this level, which is mastery. Here is where you're starting, okay? Now, if you're trying to leap all the way up here, you're like, you know what? I don't have the time. I don't want to do all these practice problems or listen to this guy on YouTube. I don't have the time for that. I just need to get up here real quick and, you know, have strong math skills. It's not going to work that way, okay? What you're going to do, you're going to jump and you're going to fall down. You're going to jump and fall down. And you're going to just be, you know, having a difficult time. It's going to be frustrating. But if you change your attitude to be like, all right, here's where I need to go. I'm just going to focus on taking one step at a time. All right, I'm going to focus on getting to this level. All right, I'm going to focus on this level. And now what you're building is a strong foundation underneath you as well. Okay. So if you're trying to take big leaps because you just don't have the time, well, unfortunately, it's not going to work that way. Right. So again, you can get to anywhere you want to go in mathematics if you just, you know, get one great instruction, clear instruction. That's what I try to provide. But two, if you practice the skills and just build yourself up one step at a time. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.